It's five musicians who died in plane crashes. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Book. Well, it seems in the last 10 years we've lost a lot of rockers. But in many cases, age was a big factor. Sure, with rockers, lifestyle is always a big thing. But nothing hurts like losing someone in their prime. In rock and roll, there have been a lot of accidents. These are musicians we lost via plane crashes. Members of Leonard Skinner. The band was formed in Jacksonville, Florida. And after releasing five studio and one live album, the trajectory of the band's career was drastically changed on October 20th, 1977. Leonard Skinner were headed to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, by plane, where they were scheduled to perform the next night. After running out of fuel, the pilots attempted an emergency landing before crashing in a wooded area five miles northeast of Gillsburg, Mississippi. There were many victims. Lead vocalist Ronnie Van Zant passed away. He was only 29. Guitarist Steve Gaines was 28, along with Steve's sister, Cassie Gaines. The 29-year-old was also the backup singer. And three others were killed on impact. Assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick, pilot Walter McCreary, and co-pilot William Gray. It was a miracle that some band members survived. Guitarists Gary Rosington and Alan Collins, bassist Leon Wilkerson, their drummer Armidus Pyle, and tour manager Ron Eckerman. Interestingly, the accident came just three days after the release of their album Street Survivors, which became the band's second platinum album, reaching number five on the U.S. album charts. In 2004, Leonard Skinner was number 95 in Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Artists of All Time and they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on March 13, 2006. As of this taping, they have sold 28 million records in the United States alone. The original cover of Street Survivors had featured photographs of the bands amid flames, with Steve Gaines nearly obscured by fire. But out of respect for the deceased, and at the request of Teresa Gaines, Steve's widow, MCA withdrew the original cover and replaced it with the album's back photo, which had a similar image of the band, but against a simple black background. They would restore the original cover, though, for the 30th anniversary deluxe edition of the album. Ricky Nelson. Born in Teaneck, New Jersey, Eric Hilliard Nelson, May 8, 1940. We lost him December 31st, 1985. He was an American singer, pop pioneer, musician, and actor. From 1957 to 62, Nelson had 30 top 40 hits, including Hello, Mary Lou, and later Garden Party. He died in a plane crash December 31st, 1985, flying from Gunterville, Alabama to Dallas, Texas. He was going to Dallas for a concert. The plane he was on was known to have a lot of mechanical problems, and all seven passengers died, including Ricky's fiance. Only the two pilots survived. Ricky Nelson was 45 years old. Interestingly, the last song Nelson performed on the evening preceding the fatal crash was Buddy Holly's Rave On, the last song that Holly had performed before his own fatal crash. And Otis Redding, born in Dawson, Georgia. Otis Ray Redding Jr., born September 9, 1941. We lost him December 10, 1967. An American singer and songwriter nicknamed the King of Soul. His hits included Sitting on the Dock of the Bay and Try a Little Tenderness. His plane crashed into a lake near Madison, Wisconsin, killing Redding and also members of the Barkays, a group from Memphis, Tennessee, that had joined Redding for a lot of shows on that tour. Only one member of the band, Ben Colley, survived that crash. For others, Ronnie Caldwell, Carl Cunningham, Jimmy King, and Fallon Jones all died. There was a fifth member of the band, James Alexander, who didn't join the musicians on the plane, since there wasn't enough room. It was James who was left later to identify the bodies of his friends at the scene of the crash. Otis Redding was 26 years old. John Denver, born in Roswell, New Mexico. Born Henry John Duchendorf Jr. December 31st, 1943. We lost him October 12th, 1997. He was an American singer, songwriter, and one of the biggest artists of the 1970s. He began his career with folk groups in the 1960s. He earned 12 gold and 4 platinum albums with the solo signature songs like Take Me Home, Country Roads, Annie's Song, Rocky Mountain High, Calypso, Thank God I'm a Country Boy, and Sunshine on My Shoulders. And he appeared on many television shows in the 70s and 80s. He was everywhere. Denver was an accomplished pilot, but on the day of the crash, he was flying a plane he wasn't really familiar with. And according to later investigations, 
The National Transportation Safety Board noted that Denver had experienced previous problems with this aircraft. After a smooth takeoff with good flying conditions, Denver lost control while apparently trying to switch gas tanks several hundred feet over Monterey Bay, leading to that unfortunate crash. John Denver was 53 years old. Patsy Klein, born in Winchester, Virginia. Virginia Patterson Hensley. She was born September 8, 1932. We lost her on March 5, 1963. An iconic American singer with several hits during her eight-year recording career, such as Crazy and Walking After Midnight. Klein flew to Kansas with several other stars. She wanted to perform on a U.S. Forces Benefit concert. But the return flight to Nashville was tragic with heavy weather and it killed everyone on board. Along with Klein traveling was the pilot, Randy Hughes, who was also her manager, and Hawkshaw Hawkins and Cowboy Copas. Patsy Klein was 30 and left behind her spouse and two children. Interestingly, Dottie West asked Patsy to ride in the car with her and her husband back to Nashville. A 16-hour drive, but Klein refused, saying, Don't worry about me, Haas. When it's my time, it's my time. We all know the stats. It's much safer to fly on a plane than many forms of transportation. Maybe Patsy Cline had something there. When it's your turn. Huge losses in music. What would have happened if they stayed around? Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Book.